the parameters SWR and S11 are often used to judge the antenna performance. In this tutorial, I will explain what these two parameters are. The voltage standing wave ratio, pronounced FISWAR, often referred to as SWR, is how much of the power offered to the antenna is reflected back. It is the ratio of power offered to power reflected. This is the same as how well the antenna impedance is matched to the source it is connected to. In this picture, the antenna impedance is indicated by Z load. The gateway impedance is indicated by Z source. In this picture, the antenna impedance is indicated by Z load and the cable impedance is indicated by a Z source. The reflection coefficient, gamma, is also known as S11. Here is the formula to calculate the reflection coefficient, and here is the formula to calculate the FISWAR. And as you can see, the FISWAR and the reflection coefficient are related to each other. In this formula, this is the load impedance in ohm, for example, the antenna, and this is the source impedance, also in ohms, for example, the gateway the antenna is attached to. The reflection coefficient values are between minus 1 and 1, and the FISWAR values are always greater or equal than 1. A FISWAR value of 1 means no power is reflected. This is the ideal situation. That is what we want. To get a FISWAR value of 1, then the reflection coefficient should be zero. And to get a reflection coefficient of zero, it means the load impedance and the source impedance must be the same. And this is what I have explained in tutorial 32. This is the formula to calculate the return loss. As input, it uses the reflection coefficient. The return loss is how much of the input power is reflected back, and it is measured in decibels. If a return loss is 20 decibels, it means minus 20 decibels, because it is a loss. Watch tutorial 5 if you want to know more about decibels. If the return loss is 0 decibels, it means 0 decibels. The ratio is 1, which means 100% of the input power is reflected back. So 100% of the input power is reflected back. If the return loss is 3 decibels, it means minus 3 decibels. The ratio is 0 0.5, which means 50% of the input power is reflected back. If the return loss is 30 decibels, it means minus 30 decibels. The ratio is 0 0.001, which means 0.1% of the input power is reflected back. A higher return loss value results in a better antenna performance. As you can see over here, the higher the return loss, less power is reflected back. Here is an example. Let's assume the load impedance is 60 ohm, for example the gateway, and the source impedance is 50 ohms, that is the antenna impedance. If you put these two values in this formula, you will get a reflection coefficient of 0 0.0909. The VISVAR will be 1.2. If you enter the reflection coefficient in the return loss formula, you will get a return loss of 20.83 decibels. To convert the decibel value to a power ratio, you use this formula, enter the return loss, as you can see here, as a negative value, the power ratio will be 0.0083. This means 0.83% of the input power is reflected back. In an ideal situation, when no power is reflected back, the impedance load and the source load are the same. The VISWAR will be 1, or as commonly expressed as a ratio of 1 to 1. The higher the impedance mismatch, the higher the VISWAR value. If the source impedance is less than the load impedance, then power is reflected back. You will get, for example, a VISWAR of 1.4, or commonly expressed as 1.4 to 1. An antenna with a FISWAR value less or equal than 1.4 is considered good. If the FISWAR value is 1.4, then the reflection coefficient is 0 
and the return loss is 15.56 decibels, which means 2.8% of the input power is reflected back. This particular antenna is a well-optimized antenna. As you can see, the phase war is 1.1, the return loss in decibels is minus 26.39 decibels, and the antenna impedance is 50.43 ohms. In this table, you see the relation between the phase war values and the corresponding reflection coefficient, aka S11, and the corresponding reflected powers in decibels, and the corresponding reflected powers in percentage. If you have an antenna with a phase war value between 1.0 and 1.4, it is called an excellent antenna. It is a well tuned antenna. If the antenna has a phase war value between 1.5 and 1.9, then this antenna is considered good. If an antenna has a phase war value from 2.0 and up, then this antenna is considered a bad antenna. This antenna is not well tuned. If your antenna has a phase war value of 2.0, it means 11.1% of the input power is reflected back. And if you have an antenna with a phase war value of 1.4, then only 2.8% of the input power is reflected back. Here are three antennas. All three antennas should be tuned at 868 MHz. I have marked each antenna A, B and C. Now let's test these antennas. To test the antennas, I am using the Factor Impedance Analyzer. This antenna A. The frequency is set at 868 MHz, and as you can see, the phase war is 6.8, S11 is minus 2.5 decibels, and the impedance is 60 ohms. Here you can see the phase war values. The marker is set at 868 MHz, and at 868 MHz, the phase war is 6.3. Let's switch to S11. Here you can see the S11 values. The marker is set here at 868 MHz. And you can see the S11 is minus 2.8 dB. I have set the frequency at 868 MHz. The phase war is 1.9, S11 is minus 10 dB, and the impedance is 41 ohms. Here you see the phase war values. The marker is set at 868 MHz, and as you can see, the phase war value is 2. Let's switch it to S11. This is S11 and here are the values in decibels. The marker is set at 868 MHz and as you can see the S11 is minus 9 dB. It has a phase war of 1.3 and an S11 of minus 17 dB and the impedance is 44.67 ohms. I have set the frequency at 868 MHz. On the left side is the phase war. As you can see, the phase war is 1.1 at this marker point. And the marker point is set at 868 MHz. Let's switch to S11.
as you can see he, over here S11 and at the marker point the S11 is minus 20.58 decibels. And here are the antenna results. Antenna A has a FISWAR value of 6.8, which means 56% of the input power is reflected back. This is a bad antenna. Antenna B has a FISWAR value of 1.9. The reflected power is 9.6%. This is still considered to be a good antenna. And antenna C has a phase war value of 1.3. Only 1.7% of the input power is reflected back. This is an excellent antenna. This is a well-tuned antenna. The next step is to connect antenna A to this end device and transmit sensor data from this DHT11 sensor. In my area, there are several gateways which are connected to the Things network. I will log the data received by the Things network. I will repeat the steps for antenna B and C. To conduct the test, I have placed my end device indoors at an altitude of 11 meters. My end device is placed in front of a window. The log data can be found at this location. In total, there were four nearby gateways which were able to receive my transmitted sensor data. See this Google map. Here is my log data. When using antenna A, which was the bad antenna, the end device cannot be joined to any gateway in my area. When using antenna B, these are my log data. And when using antenna C, these are my log data. Please note, for each antenna, I only transmitted 8 sensor data. In this Google map, you see the locations of the four gateways. Here's a gateway, here's another gateway, here's another gateway, and here is another gateway. My end device is located here. Here's an overview. These are the distances from end device to gateway in kilometers. For example, the distance from this gateway to my end device is 7.6 kilometers. And these are the antenna altitudes. As you can see, this gateway antenna is placed 42 meters above ground. The placement of this gateway is indoors. All the others are placed outdoors. These are average RSSI values and SNR values. And as you can see, there are no values here because the end device using antenna A was not able to join any gateway. This is the bad antenna. This is the good antenna. And this is the excellent antenna. You can clearly see why this is a bad antenna. Unfortunately, in this demonstration, I cannot show you just by looking at these values why antenna C is considered to be a very well optimized antenna. But if you use the factor impedance analyzer, you can see the difference. Here are the three antennas A, B, and C. Let's see what's inside these antennas. Antenna A is using a PCB antenna.
Antenna B is a sleeve antenna. And antenna C is also a sleeve antenna. In a future tutorial, I will discuss these sleeve antennas. To open this antenna, do the following. Look for the hinge. Here's the hinge. And here's the other hinge. Hold this way. Bend it, you will see a crack. But if you bend it back, the crack disappears. So what you do is use a credit card and put it in between. As you can see, I have inserted the credit card. Now you can easily bend it the other way. And now you can easily pull it out. This is how you remove the cap. But please do not use a lot of force. If you put it back, watch out for this groove and on this other side. There's a small ridge on the inside and on the other side. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.